there's an open jacket for dry ice. Mm -hmm. There's a, a closed jacket to recirculate negative 20 degrees glycol. Okay. Or you can put dry ice in there, or you can put nitrogen cooling coils for a real cold temperature, okay. and the cooling coils go inside. Right. So those are the, the four different ways that people are doing it. We have a recirculation <laughs> pump just to get more mass transfer. Yep. You know, is, just to move the How long is your, there. Um, is your process of like, when you're washing, say, a pound of, of shrimp, right? You're going to wash that pound of shrimp, or a pound of bud, say. You're going to wash that pound of bud and pump the alcohol through it. How long is the extraction process from start to finish? Like, how long is that plant material getting saturated with alcohol? E everyone's different. Usually, you're going to do a quick wash and get the good stuff out, and then the rest of it is just the crude. So, you're going to get more chlorophyll eventually at the end of the batch. See, that's what, th see, that's what, that's where my reservations come from right there, because the way I do it, there's, there's never chlorophyll. Yeah. Know, and that's what I think is crucial for a clean quality extra. Right. It, it's the chlorophyll that gives it a shitty taste, and then it's the waxes, fats, and lipids that take the clarity out of it. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So and what, what, in your case, the way you want to go, what's the best way to keep everything as cold as possible? I could utilize something like this, because that's right? a, a that's device a, like this, but I wouldn't need to recirculate anything. And I would need the ability, a device like this, I would almost have to devise our own because it, we would need the ability to put the, the, the dry ice around it and probably below it, maybe have like a funnel bottom and, and, a, and a release valve on the bottom so that after I got done agitating it, I could simply open the valve up and drain my liquid out, probably have a filter rigged below it. I could come up with a great design, but it would probably have to be fabricated and made. Yeah. I don't know that, that it exists. Do you know what I mean? Um, uh, and, and, you know, would they I, make something? Yeah. Oh yeah, because if, if, if he came up with the design, you know, of cost obviously. But if he yeah, came up with this, because you said they make these on on the whim. No, we would put it on a, a frame, an aluminum frame like that. You could have one tank up here that you open your valve and go right into your filter. But system. the whole thing is, is um, like I, I I rapidly chill all of my stuff with dry ice, and and I I think that I I rapidly chill everything with dry ice, and I keep everything chilled until the plant material is completely out of the equation. Then I don't have to worry so much about being super cold because the chlorophyll provider is gone. Do you know what I mean? And then secondly, <coughs> the way we approach trim, we're taking the chlorophyll out of the, um, out of the equation from the get-go by just starting with the sifted trichomes. So the, you know what I mean? It, it's To me, that's the the best way to keep things clean key. is to eliminate the source of the chlorophyll to begin with. If you've got trim, you can dry ice shake it, you can just shake it on its own, if as long as it's nice and crispy and, and vibrate it and, and you can sieve it and you know you can collect varying grades of it if you want to have a super potent run of the mill, you can you can vary the, the microns in your screens. And, and but for me that's that's the, the, the direction I feel is gonna be our best bet. Okay, so we just have to figure out what what we're gonna, what we need for that first process. Because it seems like, you know, once that's done, this, this equipment is and all this, this equipment is all fantastic. this equipment is fantastic. Absolutely, but we need to find something for you that in that first stage to get I, I this. I can I can design it. I can we design need, it. We need, and, but that's what and if you're gonna design. That's where Brian comes in. You know, I, I can. To, I, a good friend of mine, a really good friend of mine. No disrespect to anybody, is a mechanical engineer and he has his own shop in Waltham. He, he, it's called Acufab and he, he designs, he takes um, medical components for this company. His other consulting job is with a company in uh, Watertown called RMD and he's the guy that takes prototypes and builds them. He takes it from paper to reality. So between him and myself, we can, we can definitely come up with a plan and he's a friend of mine so I don't have to pay. You know what I mean? To yeah. get ideas flowing. So now, we now, can get a cost from him and then we can get a cost. Yeah, to, to trying to be really easy. Yeah, simple. Yeah, right, because right. yeah. we'd have to lay the lab Since out. And, and, and if That's any electricity is required, it sounds magic. like not. So, yeah. No, yeah. George, we have to so, lay this lab out sooner than later, so we just have to know. It's fine. It's fine. Right. 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 Yeah. The architect, you know, what he's looking for is any electrical, any vacuum. Obviously, you've got a fairly manual 
way of doing this, but it's, so it's more of just a how you would position this. If anything, lab. For, to be extra safe, maybe let's have an exhaust hood over the area that I'm going to be yep. processing because of the fact that there's going to be alcohol and it's going right. to be, you know, it's not going to be uh, being evaporated or anything like that. It's going to be chilled. Yeah. But right, but it's it, going to escape a little bit. It's sure. going to escape a little sure. bit. So we'll have a good ventilation there. And I mean, I can essentially say I need like a three foot by three foot stall yep. for each extraction area. That's exactly what he's. With the yeah. architect. Yep. And, so, and, and I can also tell him what roughly what size the containers yes. are going to be. Yeah, exactly. So we can we can we can definitely do Great. that. Even if the design is being floated, we'll just use you know a basic use that as a basic idea because I feel like I'm going to be doing one to two gallons of liquid. You know what I mean? Which is essentially a, we got to be able to handle the, the the liquid yep. and the cannabis. Yep. So a pound to two pounds of cannabis. No, I'm sorry, a half pound to a pound of cannabis to one to two gallons of alcohol. You know what I mean? And then we'll be left with one to two gallons of absolute once it's all filtered and everything right. in the cannabis or that goes comes over back there. out of the equation. Yep. And if we have four of these, that's four times faster we process. Or we have two of these making Rick Simpson oil, and then we have another two processing stuff that's going to go into the vacuum ovens and stuff and get processed into shatter and go other directions. Because yep. uh, even, even if we were making B-grade oil, we can then take that oil and use it to make our tensions and other things as well. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, Mike, let's say let's say one of these is going on. But, you know, these these are going on. It breaks down. You know, we need we need another one from from right off. Do you guys gonna have some in stock, or or can let's say you don't, or how quick can we get another one? You, you want a backup. Yeah, but I'm really about. Oh, how quick and a week. Just in case. Yeah. Because a week, two weeks. Well, so yeah, we, you're going to want to have more than guys, one of these, but. Let's realize, right? We can go primitive and do the same thing. So, in a worst case scenario. Here you, go, you can cobble something we, together. We can, I, can, I, can, I can bring my friggin' you, five gallon still in. You might we, not want to, right? But, right. but, but I, mean, we, I can get us out of the gym. We can get friggin' rice cookers and hot plates. I mean, we wouldn't need the hot plates because these. You know, I don't think these are going to break down. You know what I mean? There's a lot less moving parts on these. But yeah. what I'm saying is, is right. if we actually got into a pinch, I can get us out of it by my and primitive methods. Do you know what I mean? Do you need an oven and a freezer or just an oven? I just need it. I need a vac oven in a vac in a, in a, in a, in a um, vac chamber. Right. So you know that the, yeah. the oven is, you have one here, don't you? We don't have ovens, Okay. No. So a vacuum oven. They're not big. It, it, no, they're we not saw big. Them in I don't Vegas. need a very yeah. big one. And then the vacuum chamber is like a heating pad or some sort of a heating element underneath like a glass U-shaped dome where you would put like a silicone dish with extract in it and it would slowly be heated on the bottom and the alcohol and fumes get vacuumed off from the top and you control the pressure. Those you have to babysit because the extract will expand yeah. and contract and that's how you get that fluffy peanut buttery yep. textured stuff. Now do you have any interest in a cryogenic freezer to sort of super cool that that would be yeah, a cryogenic freezer could, would be good because to, to just to super you can cool, take it I can put the alcohol ice. in the cryogenic freezer prior to extraction. The whole point, the whole thing is, is how fast will that will that thing get me down to negative two forty? That's that's the thing because like I know taking an ink, like a, even an equal cooler or a Yeti cooler with forty pounds of dry ice within a half hour or an hour on that temperature, can that thing work that fast? Will it bring it down as fast or faster? That's that's the oh, it'll run, you'd run it all the time. Yeah, yeah, you'd run right. it all the time. But if I took two gallons of alcohol and put it in here, how long would it take for it to be at negative two forty? That's the question I'm wondering. Because I know, like I said, it's about an hour in the cooler. You know what I mean? For right. it, so my simple method takes an hour. Does this method work better, or are we better off getting? Or do you leave it in there, and this is a, a sort of a cheaper and an easier way? So maybe it takes two hours. You get a bigger but freezer. But you get a bunch of them ahead in there. Get a, yeah, we yeah. Get yeah. Get, yeah, you yeah. plan ahead. You just yeah. got it all yeah. in there. Yeah, that yeah, works. yeah. That works. Yep. So, so yeah, that, that could be definitely day. used for ice. And then another thing too is there's another way. So what was the other way to cool it? Um, there's liquid nitrogen. There's a lot of liquid nitrogen. So maybe with the ones that you you want high pressure coils. So maybe the one that you want 